Hello, good evening, and welcome to our front. Now, Ghanaians' approval ratings on indicators of their government's performance have declined sharply compared to what happened in 2017. This is according to a new Afrobarometer survey by the CDD. Now, a few students are content with the country's economic situation and their personal living conditions. And the majority say the country is headed in the wrong direction. Today, we have summoned the people that have been in charge of and are also currently in charge of the Government Assurance Committee in Parliament. That committee is in charge of checking and ticking the boxes on government's delivery on the promises it made to you. They'll be speaking to us on our front, but after this break. You welcome back. Now, six in ten Ghanaians, that's about 59%, say the country is going in the wrong direction. The share of citizens who see the country going in the right direction has also declined by 15% compared to what was put out in the year 2017. This is according to the CDD's Afrobarometer report. Now, this report has interesting findings. It also shows that, indeed, only three in ten Ghanaians describe the country's economic condition as fairly good or very good, and a modest decline from 35%, which was recorded in 2017. The survey also suggests that majority of citizens say government is performing fairly badly or very badly in specific areas, in narrowing the income gaps and improving the living standards of the poor. And that's a staggering 56% of the population. When it comes to creating jobs, government is doing fairly badly or very badly. And that's like 54%, more than half of the people surveyed in this particular survey are the ones indicating that. Now, to join us in this conversation is a man who previously chaired the committee in parliament for government assurance the honorable emmanuel k bedra you're welcome sir thank you very I much i hope well. you are doing well sir i'm doing great we will soon be joined by the current chairman of that particular government assurance committee too but let's start our talk with the former chairman is this surprising to you that in 2017 the survey indicated that there was a lot of goodwill for government but that goodwill is kindly consistently on the decline well Raymond um, it, 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 uh, I would say I am worried or uh, it is something that is obvious um, if you look at the performance of every government um, the first year in in, in government uh, you have a good will of the people and therefore whether you are doing well or not they will still give you the thumbs up and they'll continue to, to, to support you okay. in your second and third year that is where the people will begin to find out whether you are doing well or not. Uh, mind you, this is an Afrobarometer, has to do with perception. Yeah. And perception out there is that uh, this current government is not doing well at all. Really? I mean, from, from, from the Afrobarometer indicators uh, that CDD churned out, it mm -hmm. shows clearly that um, six people out of ten are saying that, well, uh, they are heading the wrong direction. If you ask my opinion, I'll say yes, that's the opinion of, of majority of Ghanaians that have been uh, interviewed. I mean, if you have 2,400 people being interviewed from 16 regions, and um, out of that, almost 60% are saying that things are not going on well, uh, then I should also agree with them. But let me be clear on this one, because um, the findings are not very nice when it comes to what I was pretending previously. Now, on the question of would you say that the country is going in the wrong direction or going in the right direction? Going in the right direction declined from, in 2012, yeah. it was 39%. Yeah. It declined to 15%, yeah. the lowest for a very long time, in 2014. Yeah. Yes, and uh, of course, you were chairman around that time. Yes, and it actually improved to 50% in 2017. Mm -hmm. They're declining back to the 35%. Yeah. But this looks like, even if you want to do comparison, it's way well, better than what the NDC well, had. Well, I'm not doing comparison with what NDC had. No, I mean, I'm no, saying that over the period. Yeah, so let me, let me, if you look at that, if you look at it from ang that angle, NDC was in power from 2009. And if 2004, 2012, that was getting to the end of the first term of NDC. Mm -hmm. Then uh, early part of second term in NDC it has declined, you know, as, as we just read. Um, but this time around, it has declined sharply as a result 
of, of the perception of the people. Uh, that is, this is just the first it's term of MPP in government. It's not a second term as it was in our case. This is just the first term. And the, the after first term, it has started declining. It shows clearly that this is what the people are saying. Very much so. I'll come back to you on this one, but I need to take a quick break. When I come back, we'll be joined by the chairman of the Government Assurance Committee in Parliament. And this conversation will be taking up the various levers that it's supposed to after that. You welcome back to our front. As I did tell you, the chairman of the Government Assurance Committee of Parliament is actually with us here. The Honorable Colleague Oso Mankwa. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very And much. as I did tell you, proud to hear coming in, I'll be having a bit of a chit chat with the man he replaced. You know, government changes hands. Before 2017, he was the one uh, in, in <laughs> charge of that particular committee. Now he's handed the baton to the new gentleman. Now, this conversation is particularly important because these gentlemen in the last almost eight years or less than that have been in charge of committees that are supposed to tick the boxes of what government has done. And the vetted by the people is that we are headed the wrong direction. That population has increased. And if you see specifically what the indicator was, in the year 2012, those who said we're heading the wrong direction increased from 61% to 85% in 2014. Yeah. Now, this declined to 50% in the year 2017. Then when we went to what we look, 2019, which is this year, yeah. we are looking at 59%. So the MPP came in, perhaps with a lot of goodwill, almost 50% of the population is saying that we're heading the wrong direction. This is increasing to 59%. But during the time of the NDC, and we know between 2012 and 2014, it increased from 61% to 85%. Mm -hmm. That's the conversation I started with you, um, uh, the Honorable Bejra. The Honorable Consul Yes, I think uh, 2016 why was missing. Is that, yes, why is, missing, the, yeah. wh why is the NPP being seen by the people of this republic an increasing population from 50% to 59% that it is heading in the wrong direction? Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, for this unique opportunity. Uh, first of all, let me state it categorically that um, um, as a student of research class, mm -hmm. uh, I believe in research work. Mm -hmm. It must serve as a reference document. It must also serve as a guide mm -hmm. in terms of policy making. Uh, and I'm sure that if you look at the overriding goal of uh, um, Afro barometer was uh, conducted by CDD. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's all about giving the public a voice in yeah. terms of policy uh, mm -hmm. making. Um, for you to say that 59% uh, uh, yeah. are claiming that um, the country is heading uh, the wrong heading direction. To wrong direction. Well, I will not challenge the survey because it's perception mm -hmm. and perception uh, can lead to reality because i'm a realist it can also be deceptive so um the survey was conducted uh, between september and october mm -hmm. and i can confidently say that if the same survey is to be heard today today i'm sure those respondents will change their mind Really? Ba based, based on the delivery of the budget statement and the economic policy of the government of Ghana. If, because if you look through the budget, mm -hmm. it tells you that uh, it gives hope. And apart from that, you could see clear plans and innovative ideas that are going to turn around the fortunes of our economy. And I think the government has been consistent. I see. Even in terms of uh, macroeconomic indicators, all pointing to right or positive direction. It tells you that the government is in touch with the people. And we've touched based, based on our manifesto, based on the social contract that we sign between we as a party that has formed government and the people of this country. We have touched based. Every sector has seen some level of improvement. Really? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. So Except the housing sector. Well, uh, but uh, I'm sure you are aware that uh, about two days ago, uh, we, we secured a loan from World Bank. 
uh, to a tune of, uh, I think, 200 million US yes. D, yes, to work on some of the resilient I mean, projects, including uh, um, reconstruction of uh, other, other, other river and other, I but mean, But is areas. it for housing or is it for the... No, it's for works and housing. Works and it's for works. It's for, works. It's for works. the actual, yes. Yes, right, so, yeah. yeah, because he made mention of works and housing. No, I said housing. Because oh. <laughs> 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 housing is a big deal. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure uh, we are not doing bad. Uh, of course, we have a huge deficit. Mm -hmm. We have a huge deficit of almost two million. But yeah. the, the government is committed to open, I mean, uh, up to prospective investors to come and invest in this critical sector. Let me give you a, a, a huge point they made there. The sub also suggests the majority of citizens say government is performing fairly badly or very badly in narrowing income gaps. That's sixty-six percent. Improving the living standards of the poor, 56%. And the third one is creating jobs, 54%. Well, but uh, 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 Raymond, if you look at the survey demographics, uh, even among the citizens, yeah. uh, we, think, uh, we don't think alike. Okay, yeah. Yes, based on the age bracket. If you look at the survey, I, I get and you. it tells you that even uh, uh, more 63% 60, 60, um, uh, of mm -hmm. Uh, people within uh, 18 to 35 years mm -hmm. claim that, in fact, we are heading towards right direction. That's true. And these are the people who, for me, when it comes to voting, when it comes to voting, they, 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 they have a big constituency. They have a very big constituency. And mm, let me also emphasize that the survey, in terms of representation, was done among adult citizens. Yeah. Yes, so it means that uh, the, the secondary uh, 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 school uh, SHS students were not. I see. That's no, 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 were, 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 were not contacted mm. or were not engaged. So it tells you, and these are the very people who are enjoying free SHS. And, yes. and, and come 2020, some of them they are going to it. vote massively for MPP we, we, government. We've been running a survey on our Facebook page, not so scientific, uh, about whether or not. Which one will you consider more importantly in your vote in the year 2020? Um, free SHS or the economy in general? And people are taking the economy more than free SHS in this case. Well, uh, well, 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 I beg to differ from, from, from this narrative because I don't know where free SHS is sitting when we talk about the economy. Because from the from holistic point of view, when yeah, you talk about the economy, but, but I get your it point. encapsulates a, a free SHS. No. I, I, so <laughs> even when your budget is being presented, there are social uh, sectors and yes. there are economic sectors. No. So free SHS is under education, which is in the social sector, not the economic uh, uh, economy sector. economy is big. You see, I get you. Even in terms of spending, mm. in terms of spending, uh, we are spending billions of cities on free mm. SHS projects. And it's also um, uh, part of the priority projects. Uh, mind you, government uh, has allocated over seven billion mm -hmm. uh, to fund uh, free SHS, uh, uh, livelihood empowerment against poverty, yes. uh, school, the ones feeding, that attack as school feeding, critical project, infrastructure. Yeah. Yes, all part of the priority, the priority projects. projects. I yes. get you. And it has to the economy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so for you to... Uh, for example, th those who are the beneficiaries of free SHS. That's, why, that's, why, that's, why, that's why I'm saying that we kept in touch with every critical sector as far as the economy is concerned. Really? Yes. Is that the report because, you because, get because as, if you are not as enjoying chairman of the government? If you are not enjoying sure. PSHS, uh, uh, yes. uh, perhaps you are enjoying... Uh, um, uh, NAPCO. No, 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 no NAPCO. Uh, I'm talking the, about the agriculture. No, no, no. Uh, planting for food planting and jobs. Planting for food and jobs. I don't planting. fall in any of the categories then. I, I'm no, just no, trying no, what, to no, what I'm saying. So it depends, I'm putting myself it depends, in the midst of all of this. No, I beg you. Yes. It depends on where you are coming from. I see. Yes. yes. So people are enjoying. And it, go to the rural areas. Mm. They would attest to the fact that in terms of a standard of living or cost of living, with the introduction of uh, 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 planting for food and jobs program, at least they have seen some level of improvement. In their lives, in their mm. lives, yes, yes. Even though the person, I did a survey to back that. I've not seen any survey that suggests. No, no, that. no. I, yes, I, I, I want one that backs it currently because I saw the Afrobarometer. I recently saw what the NCC also yeah. did. I've seen others. And what about the, uh, uh, the the World Bank survey? Which one? That uh, that was about uh, uh, two months ago. Uh, uh, if uh, election one? is to be held today, 
MPP government yes, is doing. E e economic intelligence. Yeah, the, the, the EIU one and yeah, the World yeah. Bank. No, the latest oh, one on uh, the World okay, Bank. I've not seen that of the World yes. Bank. So you said EIU is what no, I'm no, trying no. to tell you. I mean, the EIU one, yeah. it was clear that, look, all things being equal, MPP is going to win 2020 general elections. Yes, and they were emphatic on that. But we have not got to whether you're going to win or not. We're looking at exactly. whether or not you've improved the lives of the people currently. Exactly. As for election and the factors that mm. determine it, the it's in next year. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yes, I agree with you. Yes. yes. Please proceed on that list. He said the economy is growing. It's growing. Yes. And then I told you that there are certain indicators which, uh, uh, when you see that it's pointing to positive direction, then it tells you that things are moving well with us. Okay. And, and, and figures are figures. I okay. mean, they are sacred. So, yes. GDP, so GDP growth rate. Yes. Yes. Beyond that. Beyond that. Beyond that, you could also talk about uh, inflationary rate. Inflation, yeah. Yes, which is very critical. Yeah, it's been on the downward trend and for some time. Relatively, I mean, stabilized. Yes. Yes. Then the exchange so, rate. Exchange rate. I mean, all the... Oh, uh, you can't make a claim on exchange rate. Well, but, but for now, yes. we all know, because uh, during NDC uh, 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 tenure, yes. clearly you could see... <laughs> I mean, constant uh, 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 changes. Okay. Yes, but relatively speaking, I mean, it has been stab uh, stabilized for some time now. Then now, let me ask you a critical question. I'm giving to understand that the role you occupy in Parliament, yes. one of the things you do is also engage the people. Yeah. Sure. So that you see whether government's policy is actually sinking in with them mm -hmm. and really working. Yes. What do you get as feedback from the people? Very positive. Um, about I uh, mean, this is not because no, you are no, MPP no. or an MPP MP. No, there was a... No, realistically. No, no. no. Um, and let me let me let me say that um, Pemplas Byte, yeah, okay, one of the uh, civil society organization, mm -hmm. yes, they funded a project in my constituency to I engage see. the citizens mm -hmm. uh, uh, on democracy and good governance, and also to tell them what the government is doing, what are their views as far as good governance is concerned, and when you see feed, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, concerns that they raised. And also their overall perception about what the current administration is doing. They were emphatic that indeed MPP government is doing extremely well. Oh, that's what they say. Yes, that, 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 that was what we picked. But to be fair, this is Mencia. Mencia consistently has voted for the MPP. Did you decide to just cross no, to the other side? If you look at the but demographic if, nature if, of if, my if, constituency. If you, if you cross to the other side and maybe you walked around as well as small, do you think you'd have gotten the same opinion? Well, where, where, where we had the, the, the program, yes. uh, it's an adjoining constituency. Oh, okay. Uh, between it links and, both. Uh, 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 Asawasi. Okay. So, clearly, you could see Asawasi people also, also participating in attendance. So, so there's the, 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 you see, the prevailing condition is that Ghanaians are believing and really appreciative of the policies this government has put in place. Fantastic. Wherever you go, and it's true. You see, as for uh, uh, my senior colleague, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I think I, I'm on record to have said that they think like a reserve players. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. So as for them, eh, they, 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 they don't want to see uh, the economy flourishing. They don't want to see some level of improvement left to them they want everything to i mean uh, turn upside down but we have the mandate of the people okay and as i said that based on our constitution uh, on our manifesto that we have signed onto ourselves and also to the people of this country mm -hmm. we are working with the promises that we made assurances that we made some of the undertakings that we engage the, uh, the, the very people who elected us, I am more convinced. I am more convinced from, from, from all indications. I'm more convinced that we are on the right track. I see. Yes. Mm. Hey, that, that's interesting. The number, Bedra, I mean, you've been chairman of this committee before. Yeah. And uh, he's saying that his survey on the ground suggests that the people, contrary to what is being presented here, Really think government is moving in the right direction? Well, that is, like you said, that is uh, his survey, his thinking. Uh, not back with any, 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 any credit. No, but so you agree that the position I you occupied before, you are expected to engage the people. He's given an really example of how, on of, of, of course. He's um, given an example of how Pence plus, plus by, 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 actually yeah. 
sponsored. Yeah, one, one, way. one of these Adifa engagements. Adifa is the main architect. Uh, well, it's right. happened. They did the same thing in my concerns when we empower. And like you rightly put up, mm -hmm. if, if you are, your party has a stronghold, mm -hmm. by all means you have people who are like-minded, who okay. believe in the same ideology of your party, who believe that the party is doing well. They should go and do the same thing, my concerns say now about the perception of MPP, and the result will be different. You reject but the claim that you said people from Aswasu equally participate. Well, I wasn't there. there, so I didn't want okay, to. Okay, I, I get you, yes. But, Raymond, what I wanted to add is that when we sit here as politicians, and our conversation is all about winning political power, the next vote, then we are missing the mark. Mm -hmm. Development is not, it's not about winning vote. Development is about continuing and making sure development comes to the people. I, I am a political figure, but I believe that any political party that comes to power must continue to develop the country, must make sure that development comes to the people. The moment you, your focus is shifted from development to winning vote, you do whatever you want to do to win vote. Okay. And that's where you were, you, you know, you were bringing him back that we are not yet there. Now, the perception out there is that you are not doing very well. Why am I doing, not doing very well? It is the, your duty to begin to engage the people but when you have this turn, that yes, I'm, we are doing very well, my constituent believes that we are doing very well. If you are not careful, whatever the people are demanding, they are looking for, you are not creating jobs. They said jobs are not being created. They also Do you believe that? Well, that's the perception of the people. Yeah. And if you ask my, my opinion, in my constituency, there are no jobs there. I mean, there are no NAPCO beneficiaries in your constituency. Nap yeah. NAPCO? Yes. 100,000 so? people? That they claim they have engaged. 100,000. 100,000, right? Yes. 100,000 people yes. that yes. they claim. Yes. Out of Don't how many people have left, uh, that is left what university, the tertiary have. institution, and you were, were able to engage only 100,000? Are you saying that Raymond, the, the, Raymond, there's let's be no realistic. beneficiary from your constituency? Oh, there are a few of them. But you, that is not enough. We want, we want jobs, mm. not temporary jobs. We want jobs that will be permanent, jobs that people can do and also make a living. That's what we are looking at for. You know what? My, my argument is that we, we should not have this short term of us in the next four years. Let's do something that we can throw to the people and the next four years they'll vote us back into power. When I was a chairman, yeah. irrespective of everything, and, and you can test to that, Star Ghana decided to sponsor this committee because I don't care whether I belong to a particular political party or not. I make sure that whatever is needed to be done, I did it. Bringing ministers to book, making sure that they go according to whatever they are supposed to do. If you promise and you've not done it, I bring you to book and make sure that you go according. If you don't do it, you, you all are. Is, is that not be done now? Well, mm -hmm. uh, let me throw more light on that because uh, they say leadership decides everything. Yeah. And as part of our work plan, um, uh, uh, on the 14th to 18th um, January okay. next year, uh, we are embarking on monitoring visit. Uh, our budget has been approved by a, a right honorable speaker. Okay. Then again, after we are done with the monitoring or verification visit, we are going to engage um, some of the ministers through mm -hmm. public hearing. And, and I'm sure my senior will You've be You've not done of, so, so far? No, no, no. Um, we are in constant touch with them, of course even to verify whether indeed they have de delivered on their promises. Um, there has been some kind of correspondences between uh, the committee and their respective uh, ministries. Uh, it's up to us, of course, to visit, to verify physically. But from where I sit, I'm a communicator and I know that my government is working. I know that ministers are delivering on their promises on their uh, uh, assurances uh, made either on the floor or even outside the floor. Except that, except that it is an incumbent on the committee that is mandated by the Constitution and also the standing orders to ask it to uh, pursue all uh, assurances. Okay. Yes, so we are doing exactly that. So in next year, you're going to go around? Yes, yes. Um, uh, as part of, I mean, um, our duty tour, we, we are going, first of all, we will be engaging the southern sector. Yes. Then, so the second phase, the first phase, we concentrate on the southern sector, southern sector, uh, as in southern Ghana. Then the, the second phase, we would uh, uh, go to up north okay. for, the, for the second phase. Yes. Now, this point about 
creating jobs, that 54% thing, um, this government has done fairly poor, badly, or very badly. 54% yes. between fairly badly and very badly. Well, uh, you see, the same survey, <laughs> I don't want to do pick and choose. Yes. You know, because uh, uh, as I already But what, you don't believe in this one? No. No, what I'm saying is, uh, when question was posed to them, mm -hmm. that in terms of priority, in terms of pressing issue, uh, which issues that they want the government to address, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure for the first time in the annals of this country, if you study the, the, the Afrobarometer uh, survey, for the first time, road infrastructure uh, overtook that of employment. And it tells you that the government has done, I mean, uh, considerably well in terms of uh, At least uh, not to engaging the, the teaming unemployed. No, under NDC, unemployment eh, was uh -huh. declared as a national security threat. No, actually it was point declared in time. as a national security threat in 2005. No, no, no. That's no, why we set up the no, National no, Youth no, Employment no, Ray, Program. Raymond, Raymond. Yeah, Ray, I saw the National Security Ray, report. Ray, yes, I also yes, saw it. No, yeah, what I'm saying is... Yes. No, no, no. And it said that it was a national it was, security it was threat President Kofor, way back in no. 2005. Yes, under President Kofor. Under President Kofor. Which led to the formation of the National Youth National Employment, National Youth Employment Program. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. At least yes. for the first time, mm -hmm. to absorb the, the teaming unemployed youth. And, that's and, 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 and was under Mahama, we witnessed unemployed graduate association in this country. But under a Kofor, though, with the introduction of Nations Builders Corp. They are still there. Oh! On a Raymond, well, I don't know them. There's you know no them? Co. They are still there. Two people you mentioned. Oh, no. <laughs> and then they see, I mean, thousands of people join oh. the association. You are so not just two so people. So it's so a group. No, 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 I'm not seeing the leaders. I'm not seeing two people. I mean, okay, so, I get so, you. So, so, All right. So, let, let, let me get your point. Very interesting. So, you see, so, so it honorable. tells you so, that. Forgive me. Let him let so it land on this point. So, Kupado is working. He's working in terms of absorbing the... So, how many jobs have been created so far? I mean, thousands, hundreds, thousands of jobs. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousands of jobs. Is that a huge number to put yes, out? Yes, even to talk about uh, NAPCO alone, yeah. we've engaged hundred thousand. Yes. I mean, uh, young graduates. Be beyond NAPCO. Beyond NAPCO, we talk about the public sector. Over three hundred and fifty thousand. Can you imagine? That, 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 yes, but no, yes, but, yes, but yes, the public yes, sector no, service no. like five hundred thousand. No, 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 no. Add no, three hundred thousand no, to no, it. That was more than half the number. Generated by the ministry responsible. In fact, in the budget, three hundred fifty thousand. Yes. So for, 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 oh, yes. Please. Even even security. So so, security. so hold on. Mm. We have almost five hundred thousand people please, previously please. to your coming yes. into office in our public sector payroll. You're saying that you've added 300,000 more to it. But so we almost the, have almost 800,000 people working. 900,000. 900,000 that almost. we've been able to... Uh, so uh, why is it not showing on, on our budget? We've been able to create over 350,000. In the public sector? In the public, in the public sector. What kind of, of jobs course, are they doing? Oh. I mean, I'm just interested. Even, of course, even if you want to go talk about the security. You've been talking. Okay. Talk, even... Let's narrow even to uh, yeah. the Ministry of Interior. But security cannot absorb no, 100,000. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. Is it not part of the uh, uh, public? Uh, uh, I guess you are. I'm not disputing that. Yes. Is it public service? Oh. So Public uh, service. Uh, I mean, Ghana, the budget is there. Ghana public Police service, service mm? which is the principal law enforcement agency. No, you said public country. service. You uh, have uh, employed uh, 350,000 public people. Why? So you doubt the, the figure? Have you you doubt it. But minor minority there has come out to doubt it. And uh, said that look, forestry, we have forestry commission yes, alone. Yes, please hold on. Forestry up. alone. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? I mean, over thousands of jobs have Thousand. been created. Not even thousands. To the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. more than 20,000. 20,000. Yes, to the best of my knowledge. Yes. So if you want to uh, go into nitty gritty as to where uh, they were placed, you need to mention 50 more other sectors. Using the what they call even, it, even, even, even if you talk about um, uh, security sector, yes, Ghana Police Service, mm -hmm. and based on the directive from the president, yeah. at least in order to uh, bridge the the, the inter internationally, I mean, accepted standard when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, police population ratio, yeah. we need to recruit more personnel into the uh, Ghana Police Service. And for the first time, I mean, 4,000 personnel at a go, and it tells you. When you compare to 350,000, it looks like oh. a drop in the ocean. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, talking I'm about just that. perceiving I'm not, in my I'm mind not, I've, where these people are from. I haven't made from. mention of a uh, uh, fire service, a prison service, uh, and the security all the services other, all put together. I, I'm telling you. How many have been recruited recruiting. into the security services all put together? All put together. Uh, I think the recruitment process is, is still in progress. So you've not uh, No, 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 no. Don't say that. 
Don't yes, say that because GI, GIS is, is done uh, with DS. And I know mm -hmm. of uh, um, prison service are also recruiting as we speak. So Fire I know service. that some processes are ongoing, but currently, some agencies how many have, have been recruited so far? Yes. In all the security institutions, how many currently? I agree that some are ongoing, but how many have been recruited looking, so far? Looking at the figure, uh, I think it will be more than 10,000. 10,000? 10, yes. All put together. So far, the institutions all, you've all, mentioned all put, put together is less than 50,000. No, I, I don't know how you, you are sorry, challenging you mentioned forestry. Security. This, this forestry you mentioned, yes, you mentioned forestry. And you also made reference to an, another sector um, that, yes, security. What forestry. about the school feeding? School feeding, do you know how many uh, uh, caterers that have been uh, uh, given part of the public service? No, why is, is school feeding under the Ministry of uh, uh, Gender and Social Protection? No, but you not see, public service see, is stressfully defined. No, what I'm saying is. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. So it's not part of the government structure? No. When, when you say that you have recruited 350,000 into the public but service. But they are giving employees. I need their own contract. And you think it's not a job? No, I'm not saying so. We I, are saying that we have created 350,000 jobs. Jobs. To the people. Between direct. 2017 and now. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Mm. Yes. And we are not joking. Unlike NBC. That's what I'm saying that at least for the first time, for the first time, in terms of priority of needs, Mm -hmm. People were saying we need road infrastructure instead, instead of, jobs. of jobs. And it's positive. How do you match that against this? Against the 54 percent say you've done poorly or badly when it comes to poverty. Well, jobs. well, based on the methodology, and yes. I'm sure uh, uh, a sample size was uh, 2,400 yeah. out of, I mean, more than 30 but, million. But if you do the right sampling, it might be representative. Well, well they used random sampling. Yes, which is fairly representative. But it depends. It. it depends where it was conducted. Because geographically speaking, as Chairman said, that when but you, you that when you come to his constituency yes. and you interview his constituents, I'm yes. sure uh, 80 percent will say uh, uh, NPP uh, uh, have performed. I mean, uh, poorly. Do you have a problem on our hands when it comes to creating of jobs? Do you have a problem on our hands? Well, we Raymond, we are in this country. Yeah. I mean, just just move from here and do some random survey ask people where they are working or whether they be engaged or whether they are they are, they are not working at all you you'll be amazed mm -hmm. at the figures now these figures were were not you know kill out from 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 from, from heaven i mean people they, they spoke to people and and as you mentioned the demography that they spoke the people that they spoke to were people who will give you the the, the actual answers that yes have been engaged in, in the past you know one or two years or have not been engaged so if majority of them are saying that, well, government has not done enough to create jobs yes. for us, then I believe that that is exactly what is going on you know, around the uh, around the It was conducted you, within certain periods. You have to get uh, In every study, in every study, you have a sample size. Yes, yes, yes. So um, currently, and if uh, the survey is to be conducted today, mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure, 85 percent will say MPP. Oh, you're yeah, convinced? Yes, I'm What has so, changed? So, what has changed? Beyond reading October, the budget. October and November. Beyond reading the budget, what beyond has changed? Beyond reading the budget. Yes. Yes. But it tells you. But because based but on. But when the, you read budget, you have not created jobs. Then apart from that. But yes. this yes. budget is for 2020. Pre you see, this yeah. budget is for 2020. Let me, not let me, 2020. Let, me, let, me, let me finish that. I'll come to you. Let me add something here. I'm of the firm view that when it comes to the achievement of this current administration okay it must not be left to the president and the vice president to champion it oh, okay i want to employ i mean all the ministers and i mean the agency head also to add their voice because based on the performance report that i'm privy to they have done extremely well and i'm i'm, I'm sure they, they should intensify their communication is very important oh i see otherwise people will so talk for propaganda being churned out by ndc Okay. Because that is what they are doing. And if you look there's at... There's a lot we don't know. Yes. In the various sectors. I'm telling you, they are doing a lot. Which reflected the so lives of the people. You wait. When we start the public hearing, then you begin to see that indeed this government has performed creditably. Trust I, me. I, I see. Is that how your, your operations are supposed to go? Well, <laughs> are you hopeful that by the time the public hearings come out, the claim that things are not going as well as they ought to go will be vanquished. Well, um, you will be there. Your, your media personnel will be there. Public hearing is not limited to only a few uh, uh, media MPs, houses. Of course. 
it will be open to the whole public and uh, you'll be given opportunity to also when they are doing what we call the verification visit to slip out and send some information to uh, the various members of the committee i am hopeful that colleagues from the other side that's the minority as mm -hmm. it was done during our time will ask questions pertinent questions and get the right answers um, I only want to advise my brother, and I know he's, he's, he's a good guy, he's going to take it that he will not use any political, and I've explained to him severally, that this committee um, does not depend on any political power. Okay. When you are there as a committee chairman, you are there for the nation, and that is how the committee is structured. Currently, we are working on standing orders to even change the leadership of the committee from the majority to the minority. So that oh, I see. Yes, yes. Like I mean, the Public Accounts like Committee. Public Accounts Committee. And I'm sure by the end of this pilot sitting, mm -hmm. the end of this session. But you see, the interesting thing is, going to yeah, this, are just, some this are just are coming doing? when my brother is in opposition. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I've always supported him. <laughs> oh, OK. You know, you, I, I was, see. OK. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't was, a member. Yes, he wasn't a member. I always supported it that, look, we need the minority to become the, the leader or the chairman of the committee so that you well, can, like, like, uh, like public, public accounts, accounts or mm -hmm. even uh, subsidiary legislation, sure. so that you can exert a lot from the That's minister. True. So uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is better for this nation, not for any political you know, point that you want to, to, to win, but to also get this country back on its track. For me, uh, whether he believes that the country is doing very well, the government is doing very well or not, the perception is out there for everybody to know. Which area should government look at going forward? Well, as you mentioned, road network has yes. been one it's of been the major... It's been after key I mean, problem. Not only that, but you see, even you, sometimes when I listen to Joy FM, yeah. it's all about road. People yeah. calling sure. that my road has not been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why have you abandoned the road project? Why have you skewed our development to only you know, education in the social sector? Why don't we look at infrastructure as well? Mm -hmm. Ghanaians are looking out for something that they can say, well, I can move from, uh, from in some without any potholes to Accra. I can move from my constraints, especially my constraints, to Accra without any problem. And it's not been done. For the past three years, no road work has been done. It's not, not at a slow pace. You're saying not, not at all? I don't know whether in Ashanti region they are doing some road work. Yeah, there. yes, yes. In my constituency is a clear case. Okay, okay. You know, um, so they are working, there's road work going on of in course, your constituency. Of, of Which course. of the roads? Uh, almost all the communities, um, I think with the exception of two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because at least for the first time, a people of uh, a Bokrom estate okay. would witness, I mean, asphalt overlay. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, there's this company working on site, a DHM company. Then again, from Krofrom, Moshizongo, uh, Yenyansu to Bokrom, I was, I was, it's I was, also I was the shop company. I think I shop company. To down to, um, yeah, down there. Yeah, it's, yeah, that yeah. road has been abandoned for some time now. Well, well I think uh, w w the government is working. And as it stands now, Contractor Construction UK uh, yes. uh, uh, company, okay. mind you, they are working on the uh, ultra modern, I mean, uh, uh, airport that uh, we are putting mm, up. Mm. Uh, they are supposed to construct 100 we kilometers. Are continuing. Of yes, we are continuing. Yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> apart from the <laughs> so GOJ project. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Ah. What so I are saying? No, no, so, no, 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 no. But please, please, please briefly no. continue no, with no. that. <laughs> so, so you see, by infrastructure, uh, I mean, road infrastructure is very key yeah. uh, 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 in terms of socioeconomic, I mean, uh, development mm -hmm. of the people. And I'm sure uh, we were neglected by the NDC government for many years when they were in Really? Government. Yes. In the Ashanti region? Yes, yes. We neglected? My constituency was significantly neglected by John Mohammed's government. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, throughout their eight years stay in government, okay. it was very, very pathetic. That's why I mean. sometimes I'm so hard on them and they don't understand. Okay. Because, because now I have seen some uh, 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 improvement in terms of, I mean, road infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because we used I'm to, surprised we used that to, his constituency there's road work going on. Even Accra here, road work has stalled. By his constituency, there's road work going on. But, but his what? chairman of the government has said, No, chairman of the government has said, He's seen us. He's seen when everybody is crying about roads. Your constituency, yes, there's yes, road yes, work going yes, on. Yes, yes. It's mm. true. It's then true. you are a powerful man. Well, uh, glory be to God. <laughs> okay, now, it's an interesting point. Now, I need to switch to an important conversation that's still ongoing. Sure. 
the needs of the people and the current conversations includes what's going to happen at the district level when it comes to delivery of what the goods are supposed to be. Yeah. Currently, two things are happening in Parliament. Your attempt to amend 2431 yeah. so that we can elect our MMDCs. Yeah. And on the other side, the referendum which is happening in less than a month from now, that is to let us allow political parties field Engage. and support candidates in the election. Honorable. The NDC as a block has some views of what ought to be done for you personally. Mm -hmm. Do you think that a yes vote would ensure the needed development on the ground? No, a yes vote will not. It will not. It will not, not because just because you are NDC. No, no, not because. You are being whipped in line. No, no, no. no, you, no, no the no, minority no. leader issued a three-line whip. Raymond, I was And those of you dissenting have been asked to stole the right Raymond, line. Raymond, initially, mm -hmm. when the bill came, we all accepted it. But when we so you were yes from the beginning? Wait, we were not yes. There was, we were all for it, that there should be election. For oh, not the MMDCs. Of course, there should be yes. election. Yeah. Now, as to whether political parties should be involved, it, we, we, we do not agree on it. Really? No, there was nothing like that. We all agreed that there should be election of the MMDC. Mm -hmm. Now, where some of us took a back seat and restudied the whole thing was looking at even our chiefs. As soon as we allow political parties involvement in this election or involvement in local governance structure, you are taking, you know, you are taking away all chiefs completely from governance structure. I see. But at local level, if you look at the structure of local level from Kwame Kumata, it was supposed to be for chiefs. Chiefs were supposed to be part and parcel of the local governance structure. Now, if we ask the chiefs not to be part of it because, or because the constitution has debarred them, from participating fully in local governance structure. It means that they will not be involved at all. Mm. That's one. Two, Raymond, we just heard him that there's road work going on in his constituency. Yes, mention of. Mention of. Even Accra here, <laughs> road works are not going on. So if we all agree that, yes, let's go. But it this, depends this, on your lobbying skills. It, it, does, it doesn't. I mean, who cannot lobby? Don't we have Jato? From Kashi. About Accra, where I live, uh, uh, is Lebon. Yes. Well, uh, Tell me, I'm, I also live at where? Where, where is oh, the road where? The, uh, where? You, uh, IP, IPS now is called UPS. Yes, UPS. where? U, UPS. Yes, where? I mean, that main stretch from UPS to where? To uh, uh, AR, ARS yes. uh, runabout. Yes. Was constructed under this government, even under bridge. Under bridge. <laughs> Oh my God, where are you talking about? I'm UPS. talking about East Lebon to a, a, a Spin Test Road, mm -hmm. yes. under bridge. They no, that's not what you said from UPS Junction. Yes. To where? A R A is it A R S? Yes. A -R -S. Run about. No, yes. it was done by NDC. It's not true. Check the record. Okay, I think this can be verified. But <laughs> it was done yes, by NDC. No, 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 that would send this you know, country back. I get you. No, let me hear from you, Honorable Collins, so I'm on call. Obviously, you are for a yes vote. We, yes. Do you think we should yes postpone this way. election? You see, we are not looking the, uh, the, left the, from the right. The national chairman says We're postpone. Going straight. Hold on, We're give going. me a second. National chairman says postpone. Dr. Koko Ophie said postpone. Dan Boche says postpone. The minister says we will well, not postpone. My opinion, they say, I like nurses. What so do you think should I be done? I can begrudge them. Yes. But from where I sit, mm -hmm. I think all is set. Of course, you were right that uh, there are two amendments. Mm -hmm. One, we are amending uh, 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 243, no, 243 clause 1 of the Constitution mm -hmm. and also clause 3 of uh, 55 of our Constitution. That's the that's referendum. That's the referendum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is referendum because it's an entrenched clause, yeah. Yeah. which is protected by the Constitution. Yeah. So this is what is going to happen come December 17th. The Electoral Commission of Ghana will be providing us with three boxes. The first one, you have right to vote who should be your assembly member. Mm -hmm. Then, then again, you select five for a unit committee, local government unit, unit committee. Then, mm -hmm. the the third boss has to do with the referendum of clause three of Article Fifty Five. Yes, to allow political parties to sponsor candidates for elections to district and also local government units. What we are saying is, let's vote yes, yes, because we are not just talking. But we are saying that it's based on established facts and thorough research that we've conducted over the years. What are these facts? The facts are that 
after superintending uh, uh, um, appointment of MMDCs for over 30 years now, since 1988. Ghana is not going to be the first country to have introduced multi-partisan basis at the local government structure. So others are doing it. Of course, when you go to United States of America, you talk about United Kingdom, you talk about uh, uh, Senegal, uh, and I know Senegal very well. So they we are should doing copy it. them. Burkina Faso. So we don't want to look odd. Of course, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And now people have expressed uh, uh, some kind of fears. But to lay their fears, mm -hmm. what I know, that even if you go to South Africa, look at cities like um, uh, 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 Cape Town, Pretoria, uh, Johannesburg, all being governed by the opposition party. Yet they've been able to manage the system and very that well. That is the federal no, system. No, 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 I'm coming. I'm That's coming. a federal system. I'm coming. Where you can generate I, I, your... I have made mention of Gambia, Namibia. Okay. They're all doing it. Okay. All, I have done extensive research on local governance and rural development. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying is we are voting yes because, look, we want to do away with deception at the local level. Who we, is we, want to, we want to sanitize the system so that even if your assembly member eh, is, is, is seen to be misbehaving, eh, you would have an appropriate authority to report to when we introduce multi-partisan basis at that level. Then again, it's, go, it's also going to, the reason why we are voting yes is that it's going to revive um, a, 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 the, the a, a political parties that are, I mean, in redundancy. Uh, uh, we need to rekindle their spirit. Because let's say here, Kukumlimli, let's say Kukumlimli is being dominated by PPP as mm -hmm. a party. It tells you that PPP, with yes, PPP is going to have voice at the local level governance. Okay. And it will not die off. Of course. So it's going okay. to revive, I mean, smaller parties. So the they, whole of four I'm years coming, of leadership I'm, 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 I'm will coming. be involved in partisan politics. What, which partisan politics? Because what, what, what local government election will not what be I'm done saying is, the same what I'm year. Saying is, you. Ah, so I get you. Please, so every please year. what I'm saying is, why, yeah. why are we behaving like this? No, it said <laughs> why are we working? Yes. Let me tell you, NDC, and I think it will be hypocritical. No, no sorry, sorry. I want you to stay on reasons why they should Because we are on the same uh, page yes. for one set. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, there's they, a U-turn. took a U-turn. And suddenly, that's what I'm saying that, look, they should check their own manifesto. Mm -hmm. They should check it from 2008, their manifesto, 2012, their manifesto, and 2016, their manifesto. You look at MPP's manifesto, uh, PPP, and I mean CPP, all the other, they, they all promise that they will go to be election. see direct be election. election of Those MMBs. Election. I'm coming. Not of partisan business. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> that, that is how we, we believe that introducing or making it multi-partisan approach would make the so assembly where more more effective and efficient. So, my brother, reason why we are voting, our chiefs, yes, which role will they be playing? Listen, that's of course, there's going answer. to be consequential amendments to certain provisions under our laws. Okay, uh, so I the chiefs will not I be think, left out. I think Article Two Four Two uh, talks about the composition of the assembly. We are not going to take away their power to nominate people to the assembly. Likewise, the vulnerable, the, the vulnerable, and will they be elected in a democratic? Will the ten percent I mean, currently um, appointed be elected to? Will the ten percent? Of course, we're not going to. We're not going. What What is going to be uttered yes. is the fact that we're going to oversee direct election of our MMDCs. Not the unit committee. Then, yeah. then, then we trigger because if you look at the constitution very well, for me, and I've observed it. If yeah. you look at clause three of Article Fifty Five, mm -hmm. eh? It's, it's inconsistent with directive principle of state policy when it comes to Article 35, says D. If you have constitution here, you, you, what you, you can read. What does it say? What does it, 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 it tells us that the constitution prescribed that we should make democracy a reality mm -hmm. okay. by decentralizing uh, uh, the, the administrative and the financial machinery of the government to the regions okay. and to the, to yeah. the district yes. by affording the people with possible opportunities yes. to participate when it comes to decision making not at every on, level. On at every party. level. So, so, so what I'm saying is we <laughs> need to sanitize it while we introduce a multi-partisan basis at the, at the national level but and not, not at, the bottom. at the bottom. Why? Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, folks, that's where we end today's we edition of yes. Upfront, many thanks for joining us on this one.